In this video, we're going to talk about inferential statistics about group means. Now, let's imagine for a moment that I'm in dietetics, and I am under the opinion that folks in the Mediterranean have a healthier diet than folks in the U.S. And I want to measure that, and so I could theoretically go get all of the people in the Mediterranean and then go collect up all of the people in the US. Uh, and my theory is that if the diet is in fact healthier in the Mediterranean than the US, then what I'll see is that the US population is a bit larger physically. So I wanna compare the average adult body weight uh, between people who live in the Mediterranean area and people who live in the US. The problem with this is, although I'm interested in the average body weight of everybody in the Mediterranean, I can't really get at everybody in the Mediterranean. Um, even if I were able to arrange to measure the body weight, have a, have a giant weigh-in, and weigh absolutely everybody in the Mediterranean, by the time I was done measuring them, the population of interest would have changed. Uh, it would take me long enough that someone would have died. Um, maybe I'm only interested in uh, Mediterranean residents over the age of 18, and so after I measured the first one and before I measured the last one, you know, another 150 so folks had their 18th birthday and now they're in my population and they weren't before. So it becomes extremely difficult to measure the population, if not completely impossible. So our solution is we have to measure a sample. So we have to select a smaller group and measure them uh, under the assumption that they represent the sample. Now, let's say I did that. I've got my 10 Mediterraneans and my 10 folks from the US and I measure their body weight and what I come up with is that the mean body weight among my participants in the US is 150 pounds and the mean body weight among my participants in the Mediterranean is 160 pounds. So I could just simply decide straight away that, oh, well, I guess I was wrong. I had it backwards. People in the Mediterranean are actually fatter than people in the US. But that might not be entirely accurate. So if I expand my sample, and, and now I've got 15 participants in both locations, and I recalculate my average body weight, now with these 15 participants, the average body weight of my US participants is 158 pounds and in the Mediterranean it's 149 pounds. So the sample can fluctuate relative to how well it represents the population. And so this brings up some interesting points about the sample mean that I want to that I want to talk about very briefly. The first is this. The sample mean is always the best estimate that we have available of the population mean. Also, the sample standard deviation is always the best estimate that we can possibly come up with for the population standard deviation. Uh, these are not values that are inherently known by anyone, um, and, and so the sample is our best guess. Um, Unfortunately, the sample may not be representative of the population. Um, and there is absolutely no way to empirically test that. Right? So there's no way to empirically determine how well the sample represents the population short of actually measuring the entire population. However, there are many reasons to suspect that the sample is not representative. And so what ultimately happens is that we look at reasons why the sample might not be representative, and then we 
do our best to control for those possible outcomes in order to make our sample as representative as possible. But there's still no way to establish that empirically. We simply have to assume. And so ultimately what we have to do then is we need an inferential test to compare groups with any confidence. If you directly compare the, the means of any two groups, there's no way to be sure that the differences that you're observing are not due to sampling variation, right? Uh, because I picked these 10 people instead of those 10 people, suddenly the, the Mediterraneans appear to have a higher body weight than, than folks in the US. And if I select a different group of folks, uh, it, it switches. And, and so that's what we call sampling variance. And in order to compare groups with confidence, we're going to use, at least in this, in this class meeting, we're going to use two different types of tests. So t-tests compare two means. And we'll look at two different varieties of t-test. One is the dependent samples t-test, in which we give the same participants the exact same measure under two different conditions. And we'll also look at the independent samples t-test in which we give the same measure, usually under the same conditions, but to two different groups of participants. Um, ANOVAs actually use a, a very similar mathematics to the t-test, or at least the one way ANOVA does. Um, but ANOVAs are designed to compare multiple means. So with a one-way ANOVA, we're using the same measure, and we are either using the same participants under multiple conditions, might be three, might be four, might be eight conditions, it depends entirely on our design, or we're looking at the same conditions but with multiple groups of participants. And so as we move on into the next uh, couple of videos, we'll demonstrate the different varieties of t-test and we'll demonstrate a one-way ANOVA so that you can see how that works.